is blessing us as we come together this day. This is a day that God has made, of course. And what we're here to do is to receive the blessings that you and I need so that our strength then comes from the Lord for our faith. For our faith, which is in the Lord, the Savior, the one who gives eternal life. So here it is, Labor Day weekend. Thanks for being here. I hope you have some good parties planned. We have good Labor Day weather. That's, that's for sure, in my opinion. I want to remember uh, with you Beth Andrews. Many of you know Beth. She's in mourning for her husband's death. He died early this week, and uh, the funeral for him was on Thursday. And so we remember Beth, and uh, Rich uh, died. And uh, you know what our hope is. Our hope is in the resurrection to eternal life. And that's the word that we can share with one another, because that is sustaining us in a true consolation. We do have one person who's not with us, who sits back there about where I think uh, Rachel, you sit, and so forth. But Mary uh, Martina, many of you remember her as a woman who would sit right there. She broke her hip. Aww. Yes. And she's in rehab at the Lutheran Hall. So she's. Uh, I'm sure going to do well, but uh, Pastor Hamer wanted to call me and say, do you know about her? Well, I was missing her, so thanks be to God, she's in good shape. We have a temple choir that's going to resume practice Wednesday. Did you want to sing ever with temple choir? Yes. Yes, yes you do want to. I want to. You do want to. Johnny, the response is not good here this morning. We'll see what happens Wednesday. It'll be good. You do. Okay. Well, there is a schedule for a concert next week. It's canceled. They have to reschedule because of problems with health and so forth. Do you know that next Sunday, next Sunday, we're going to start our fellowship time again? And it's also going to be time for confirmation studies. Oh, I can't wait to get started in that. And so remember next Sunday after church. We're going to do something today we haven't done for a long time. And that's pass the offering plates. And it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to start from the rear and bring it up to the front. But it's a, a simply a way of receiving our money offerings, bringing them forward, as well as with the gifts of bread and wine. Any other words, any other announcements? Or certainly we always welcome visitors and people who have come back uh, from wherever they've been. Now we prayerfully listen to our musical prayer.
Dear friends, our processional hymn, hymn number 364, in our green hymn, we stand together, Son of God, Eternal Savior, 364.
God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
Feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome by the devil and evil, but overcome with evil with good. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. for us. Are you being a Satan? Say no. no. <laughs> so that's really no joke. We do things that are against the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in those times and places that we do that, we are really being motivated by a spirit that is not God, not Jesus. Christ, not the Holy Spirit, but is that hard word, Satan. We live in a dichotomy, a dichotomy of what is good in God's sight and what's revealed in the scriptures, and also the things that come to us from many other sources, but they are not sourced in the scriptures. There's a difference. Our society does know about things that are not good. Yeah, right? We know that. There's sometimes I think I should just go through a list of things that I think are not good in our society. And then I start making it in my head and I think, everybody knows that. And what some wise person said to me one time, I said, why don't we talk a little more about the devil? And this wise person, Anon, said to me, Pastor Fulmer, focus in the light. Walk in the light. Everything else will fall in place. No, no, don't go there. Always preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and his love and his way. And so today we hear it is the way of the cross. Take up your cross, follow me. Take up your cross. Do those things that are Christ-like. 
If you need a list of them, St. Paul did very good today in our reading, didn't he? What is right, what is true, what is honorable, be about those. St. Paul can list that so many different times. Or take that uh, passage in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient and kind, love is not boastful. You know all those words, but those are the light shining in the darkness. Those are the words that need to be resounding in our spirits as we walk through this world where there is so much darkness. The world that is crowding us in with an emphasis upon a pathway that is leading so many to uh, destruction. I mean, we can, we can say there's destruction all around us. All around us. And so we want to be those people that are living in the light of Jesus and being thankful that we can gather here today and hear these remarkable words of Jesus. Of course, Peter is a leader of all the disciples, we know that. And as he moves along in his discipleship of Jesus, we know that he does deny Jesus. And so this matter of Jesus saying, get behind me, Satan, some people interpret that and say, Jesus is looking at Peter and he sees Satan beside him. And so he speaks to the devil and says, get away. Is Peter Satan? No. But is his influence right next to him? Yes. And that's true for us also. The influence of the dominion of darkness is around us. And so Jesus could say, okay, darkness be scattered. Let it be scattered because the light has come. The light has come into our world in Jesus Christ. You know, in about three months, I think we'll be celebrating Christmas, aren't we? Six. Oh, three months, I think. Oh, yes. And we'll be in Athens and we'll be celebrating Jesus coming into the world as a light. And then a few months after that, we'll celebrate the center of our lives together in the cross of Jesus Christ in, um, oh, Lent. Amazing. Did you look in your uh, worship addendum today and see what Pa is going to play today for our postlude? As he came in and said, what are you doing that for, Pa? I like it, but he said, well, you know, it's right there with the cross, and it's right there with the resurrection. That's what's happening. I'll be listening carefully, Claude, wherever you are. <laughs> well, anyway, it doesn't matter. There's sound out there, too. So, you know, that's a joyful song we're going to hear. Because that is what Jesus wants us to take into our hearts and our minds and to live with. When we heard Isaiah and his prophetic words, he really was talking about the struggle that he was having as a prophet in order to speak the word of God because he had this sense that God wasn't always leading and guiding as he wanted God to be doing. And so we could read him and say, Oh, he was struggling too. Well, you know, the people of God all through the ages, all through these 2,000 years of Christian history have been struggling. We are the ones who are so fortunate today to hear a reading from that gospel which points to us the way to live. The way to live. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you a question that you don't have to answer do you have a cross on you somewhere with you? Yes, yes, yes we don't have an answer, but you can't answer. I have one. Oh, I have one in my pocket. Huh. A cross sometimes becomes for people uh, an article of jewelry. That's what I'm talking about, not talking about. But do you carry a cross with you? And you know, even though you don't have something physical as a cross with you, you have been signed with the cross of Jesus Christ in your baptism, and so you're always living with the sign of the cross 
on you. At confirmation, we'll be signing the cross on these young people who come forward to profess their faith. The sign of the cross in oil, the chrism, that which identifies them once again as a Christian. So although we may not objectively say, oh, I have a cross with me today, you're living in the cross way. Because that's what Jesus is encouraging us and empowering us to do by his very presence here, empowering us to take up the cross in our own ways and to follow him. That's our Christian journey. And that's the word for today. Take up your cross and follow him. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand. We're going to be looking to the Apostles' Creed of the Statement of Faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us make a good confession of our sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit so that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. Know the unknown. Things done and left on Hold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has mercy on you and forgives you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, he strengthens you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps you in eternal life. Amen. We want to remember God's gracious ways with us, his caring, caring, and generous word that comes through us through the Spirit and through Jesus. So we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God of life, your words are the joy at the heart of your church. Draw the seekers to you, place messages of hope and healing mouths of your witnesses and open your children to your truth when we stumble. Lord, in your mercy. God of steadfast love, renew the earth by your spirit that lands and oceans reveal the beauty of your creation. Challenge us to live humbly and peaceably as part of your world. Lord, in your mercy. God of patience, Lead those who govern to hold fast to what is good. Guide them to show honor to the people in their care. Overcome evil in all nations and grant peace to peoples and places mired in conflict. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of deliverance, remember all who are suffering, lonely, and in pain. Liberate your people being in 
insulted, persecuted, or in the grasp of the ruthless. Give endurance to workers who, preserve, who persevere on this Labor Day and ensure fair wages and safe working environments to all. Lord, in your mercy. God of justice, equip this congregation to boldly follow you in uncertain times and to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our communities. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, you gave Jesus as our Savior, teacher, and friend. Help us to be continually renewed as his disciples. We are seeking to do acts of service in his love. Lord, in your mercy. Each week as we gather, we offer silent prayers and intentions, which are known only by the Holy Spirit. So then help us be in a period of Lord, in your mercy. God of enlightenment, fill us with truth and knowledge to always do what is worthy of you. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, guide us to help those less fortunate by sharing our bounty and wealth. Lord, in your mercy. God of power and might, Give those in our world who are suffering weather catastrophes the ability to persevere and rebuild their communities and their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of glory, we give thanks for the saints who now dwell with you in splendor. Nurture our faith until the day we join their heavenly song. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love, Heavenly Father, and we offer these and the prayers to you from our heart, trusting in your compassion made known to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And let us share a sign.
pray. Merciful God, we offer the joy and thanksgiving that you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. To receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him and with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now we pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. Amen. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 